This afternoon from the mile high city of Denver, Colorado, the Pittsburgh Pirates conclude their seven game road trip and they aim for a sweep over the struggling Colorado Rockies who've dropped five in a row. The Buccos, meantime at 11 and 7 playing good baseball. And we're coming your way from Coors Field in Denver. Greg Brown along with former Pirates second baseman Neil Walker. Robbie and Spikowski will be along throughout the telecast. And this offense, boy, you got to like what you see, Neil. Especially like what you see from Jack Sawinski, who's homered now three times in the last two games. Well, he's gotten hot on this road trip, hasn't he? St. Louis had a, had a nice series. Comes into here and is, is at three homers over the first two games. Of course, one of these is off the position player. Uh, but you still got to barrel it up. You still got to get it in the air. He had an opposite field home run, as you see here in the second inning last night, and then a two-run home run to give the Pirates a lead in the fourth inning. So good to see him back in the lineup, even against the lefty today. I think he's exercising those road demons, Browning. Uh, yeah, three home runs in really three plate appearances for Swinski. That's as many home runs on the road as he hit all of last year. Look what he's done the last six games. That OPS, over 1,500. Yeah, and that's that's the one thing we know. When Jack puts the, puts the ball in play, it's hit hard. He's averaging over 95 miles an hour anytime he's putting the ball in play. And those numbers are going to play well, particularly if you get him in the air consistently. Eaton Park performance that made you smile and also making the Pirates smile. is a former Rocky. He was drafted in the first round many years ago by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Connor Joe, a right-handed bat who compliments Jack Sawinski. This guy plays all over the place. And Neil, he's a professional. Professional is probably the best word you can use for him. He puts together good at bats. He plays whatever position you're asking him to play. He runs the base as well. And yesterday's game has a double, has a triple, scores on this play right here, which was a, ended up being a really close play. But more than that, he's been he's been able to find a niche with this team, and they've used him very, very good to this point. So I think that you're going to con continue to see more and more bats and playing time for Connor Joe. That fourth inning double right there started the three-run rally for the Pittsburgh Pirates in the fourth inning. Well, Johan Oviedo looking to keep a string of good starts going for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll talk about the Bucko starter coming up next. To Coors Field here in Denver, and there's Johan Oviedo. He's got a good string going, 15 and a third scoreless inning streak. It's the longest and the most in baseball right now, and He's just gotten so much better, Neil, uh, each start out. It, it seems like the only time we saw him get out of control was the very first inning of the entire season, right? The breaking ball has been sharp. The slider has been wipe out. The fastball movement and the velocity have been really impressive to this point. You know, he will be challenged today with the breaking ball, especially at this elevation in, in Colorado. But he's always got that little get out of jail free card with that fastball. Sheely scouting report. Look at the Pirates starters have done over the last eight games. Just tremendous work. An ERA of just over two and a half. And Oviedo looks to continue that. He's been a big part of it. These starters going at least six innings. It's been a big deal for this Pirates club. They try to sweep. The Rockies keep swinging the sword. Austin Gomber on the hill for the Rockies. First pitch coming your way next. Pittsburgh Pirates and fans like you. Buy your local Cohen Market, where you save on fuel, food, and more every day. And buy Levin, the official furniture and mattress partner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Let's go Bucks! Pirate fans, hoping to see their club sweep the Rockies. Head home tonight after the game, get ready for a big homestand four with the Reds starting tomorrow night. Off day Monday and three with the Dodgers. Austin Gomber takes the hill, looking for his first win of the season. This is his fourth start. This will be the fourth lefty on this road trip the Pirates see. Not quite hockey weather. Avalanche lost the uh, first game of their Stanley Cup playoff series last night to Seattle. Rap for starting lineup. You saw Key Brian Hayes getting ready, trying to set the tables for Brian Reynolds. 17 ribbies, tied for second most in the league. Andrew McCutcheon is back in there as the DH. Carlos Santana is at first. Connor Joe and Wright. Shortstop Rodolfo Castro. Mark Mathias, career night the other night, is at second.
Jack Selinski in center. Jason DeLay will do the catching. Yeah, a little bit chillier today, as you can see, the boys in sweatshirts. And, but they've been having fun. They really have. It's been a good road trip. It'd be amazing to see these guys finish this road trip with a 5-2 and two record and head back home with a good opportunity against the Cincinnati Reds this weekend. Austin Gomber, as you mentioned, Greg, fourth start for him, 8-1 with 14 innings, 11 Ks, six walks, and digging through his numbers. The big thing for him, it's his breaking stuff, his curveball slider have really been tagged this year so far, and, and the fastball location has uh, been struggling as he's going to have Brian Servant calling his pitches today. Brian Hayes, a five-game hitting streak. And we're underway, he takes ball one. On base three times last night was Hayes with a hit and a couple of walks. 368 road trip for the Pirates third baseman and look at this whacked into center field and hit hard enough. It's going to the wall. Keep Brian Hayes talk about setting the tables and swinging that sword. What a way to start a lead off double. Well this trend just continues for Key Brian. Hitting everything, not just fastballs, but breaking balls, change-ups. We're so used to seeing him use the middle part of the field. And this is just a fastball that's tried to get, Gomber tried to get in the inner half, and as you see, it just sat right in the middle of the plate. And Key has not been missing those so far this season. Just hasn't got a lot of hits, but they're coming. You can feel it. Off to the races, and now Reynolds. Reynolds, a five-game hitting streak. Pirates have seen Gomber in the past, and Reynolds says to the home plate umpire, he's got to give me a chance here. Adam Beck, home plate umpire, telling Gomber, give the batter an opportunity. No more quick pitching. One ball and one strike. It's Adam Beck behind the dish. Clint Von Drack is at first. Dave Morales at second. The crew chief is there in the wind. Dan Asanya. Lined to second. And Reynolds tried to do the job. But right to the second baseman. That is Alan Trejo. Alongside him on the right side of the infield is the Moose, Mike Moustakis. Ezekiel Tovar is short with Ryan McMahon. Gold glove considerations last year for McMahon. Jerks and Profar, Harold Castro, and there's Charlie Blackman. Up in right with Ryan Servin behind the plate. There's the moose. Now Andrew McCutcheon. Eric Shelton has arrested his veterans this trip and in this series in particular. So last night it was McCutcheon's night off. Five game hitting streak for him. He's hit safely in six of his last seven and there's a line drive base hit in the right center. Andrew McCutcheon. He's got a two, an RBI double and he's going to hold there with a two bagger. Right around a second. I thought about going to three right there for a second. One nothing Pirates McCutcheon. Ties Dave Parker for seventh on the all time Pirates doubles list. That's 296. Well, Kutch just takes this fastball on the outer half and stays on it, just like Brian Reynolds did the bat before, but was able to get it up over second baseman Alan Trejo's head. Easy double for him, easy run scored. Chopped by Santana. One nothing Pirates three batters into this game and Brian Reynolds almost lined a single over the second baseman's head. Yeah McCutcheon and the Pirates are smiling these days. That's a 1480 hits for McCutcheon. He breaks out of a tie with Dave Parker and moves into sole possession of 13 place. On the all time Pirates hits list 1480 for McCutcheon. Whacked in the left center field by Santana. Rebella will wave home McCutcheon. It's 2 nothing Pirates.
first inning, two nothing Bucks. Well, this trend from the first game of the series against Kyle Freeland is continuing. Both, both Gomer and Freeland have very similar stuff. <laughs> Holy cow! Wow. I didn't realize how high that ball was up in the zone. The Santana goes up and gets it, but. There, th this no pull approach, stay in the middle of the field, off, opposite field gap approach is a really, really good one like I was talking about a few days ago with Kyle Freeland. And they've carried it over into today. Obviously, they had a right-hander yesterday. But the approach, I mean, the, the approaches have been really, really solid, not just on this road trip, but for the most part, the entire year. Now, Connor Joe. Still amazes us watching McCutcheon back in that Pirates uniform and he is producing as he said this is not just a farewell tour that's hit hard by Connor Joe into right center field Sidney Castro back and this ball's off the wall runner gonna be waved home Connor Joe into second with a double scoring from second Santana it is three nothing Pirates wow the Lumber Company in Coors Field. I mean, I feel like I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. Middle Keep saying it. Keep saying it, Neil. <laughs> Elevated pitches in the zone. These guys aren't missing it. Connor Joe, this one off the middle bottom part of the wall. Easy double for him. Santana on his horse. As you see, the boys waving him home. Scores all the way from first base. He had, little, had to hold up just a second to make sure that was going to be over Castro's head. And once he had reached second, took off. And scores all the way from first base on the double by Connor Joe. And an early visit by Daryl Scott, the pitching coach. Huh. This is something else. Now Castro and Joe thought about taking off a third Castro lines this to center. Everybody putting on some good swings here. So the two outs that we recorded here Reynolds lines to second and now Castro lines out to center and McCutcheon and Santana. Yeah. Cool him off. It's a long trip around the bases. Chase DeYoung having some fun too, even though he's on the injured list currently. The batter now, Mark Mathias, career high, four hits on Monday. He's five for 20 as a Pirate. One ball, no strikes on Mathias. Two and oh. Here's one for you, Greg. Key Brian Hayes, 106 off the bat. Brian Reynolds, 95 off the bat. Andrew McCutcheon, 104 off the bat. Carlos Santana, 106 off the bat. Connor Joe, 101 off the bat. Man. Is that a good start? I think so. Pickoff try. Trejo, the second baseman. The old timing play right here. Probably still would have been safe if he caught this ball. Worth taking a shot. Try to break things up a little bit if you're a pitcher in a in middle infielder with a guy on second. See if you can't catch somebody sleeping. 2-0 count on Matthias. 3-0. and Austin Gomber barely has taken the mound and all of a sudden Baseball's being hit all over this field. And the thing that was impressive the other night, that offensive onslaught, and Derek Shelton mentioned it, that the fact that they didn't let up. Because here at Coors, you just never know. And there's ball four. So it'll be Sowinski. Winsky six game hitting streak. Homer his first two times up 
last night after homering in his final at bat. In the ninth inning on Monday. Then he walked in the fifth inning against lefty Brent Suter popped up off lefty Brad hand in the eighth. Two and oh. Gomber who was acquired from the Cardinals the Nolan Arenado trade. Ball three. And Gomber looks like he's just trying to trying to hit these corners right here. He's seen what ha he's seen what has happened in the middle of the plate. It's a strike. Gomber has the advantage in that Sawinski has not gotten a hit in 35 straight at bats against lefty pitching and he's going to walk to load them up for Jason delay back to back walks for Gomber. Delay to the plate here he started Thursday to begin the road trip he started Saturday in St. Louis. Line drive base hit into left field for delay. Rebello going to wave home a second run. Jason delay a two run single scores Joe and Matthias and it is five nothing Buccaneers. Well that's Holy nine to the plate most Greg five runs in. Really really solid approach first time through the order. Gomber obviously having some control issues. He's either been way out of out of the plate, or as you see right here, a little middle end pitch to Jason Delay, and he just barrels it up. Here's Key Brian Hayes. Ball one. So tell us about this approach, Neil. It's you know, you know you're not gonna get beat with the fastball, so you don't want to go into a full on pull approach, which Jason Delay didn't do right there. He's staying on the middle. He's trying to. He's trying. If he sees the ball in, he just wants wants to pull his hands in because he knows the velocity is not something that he has to cheat to. And if he gets an off-speed pitch, he's trying to basically shoot it back up the middle or even to right center field. One ball, two strikes. Keep Ryan Hayes started this inning, this game off of that double to left center field. Sawinski at second, delay at first. Line drive the left field, but this will end it. The three outs were line outs. Whoa. How about the plucky Pirates? Five runs, five hits, Andrew McCutcheon, and the rest only in the first. Off the wall in right center in that first inning, Carlos Santana, RBI single and scored, Jason DeLay. Finish things up with that two run single to left after Jack Sawinski had walked. Now Johan Oviedo staked to an early lead. Ball one. Facing Jerkson Profar. He was three for nine in the series, was one for five last night. Veteran switch hitter. Uh, we were complaining the last time out that Johan Oviedo didn't get any run support. As you see right here in the PA lottery numbers for him, his fourth start of the season with a 2 4 5, 18 innings, 19 Ks, and five walks. But I don't think we can complain about that. Mm -mm. At least not after this start by the Pirates' offense. Ball two strikes on Profar. He said delay. Yep, Oviedo's first start at Fenway. He gave up five runs, four earned, and four and two thirds. And no decision. The Pirates won that game 7 6. Start the season on the road. For 
those runs all came in the first inning. Five straight batters reached three home runs off of him. And did he go? No. That was close. Mm. Real close. Struck him out looking. Good start for Oviedo. He gets pro far. Now it'll be Charlie Blackman coming up, then Chris Bryan and Ryan McMahon, Mike Moustakis. Big numbers against the Pirates. Alan Trejo is the second baseman. Harold Castro, Ezequiel Tovar, and Brian Servin. The Rockies, Blackman. And they start in right field. A couple of hits last night. His two hits in the series also drew two walks. That was that was Oviedo at 95 looked like 105 the way Blackman approached it. There's Vince Velasquez. He was the starter last night. I fly ball to right. Connor Joe will give way to Jack Sawinski. Velasquez gave up those first inning runs last night. Three of them. The Pirates offense came back. Jack Sawinski's home run in the second. Another homer in the fourth. The Pirates scored three more. They led it five to three. That was it. Velasquez went six. Got the win. Chris Bryant. The first inning home run off Velasquez in last night's ball game. Brian has homered in back to back games. Christian Marrero, assistant uh, to Andy Haynes, who's on that iPad. Andy Haynes, the hitting coach. Well, you'd be getting nitpicky if you found too many negatives from that first inning, which I'm sure they didn't. Good place to boost your confidence. Yeah. This place. Well, that's 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 the thing with the hitting coaches, especially when you come here. You just you try to reiterate to these guys like don't don't try to do too yeah. much. You know, stick to your approach. If you can get a ball in the air on the barrel, you're going to have a good chance of a double, triple, homer. And that's been their approach, Neil. Right? Yeah. They have not tried to do too much. And they're fourth in the NL in, in home runs hit too, which you know, I, I won't necessarily say you're surprised by that, but. In the past couple years, even coming into this year, you, that's that's not a stat that you typically expect to see the Pirates at the top of. But you know, Jack's got four on the year. Kutch has a couple. Ryan started off hot with five. That's good. Bryant, Shin, maybe. You know, the Pirates are uh, fourth in the National League, as Neil said, with 23 homers. They're seventh in slugging. They're eighth in OPS, 757 OPS. Another look off his foot. Ryan Reynolds out in left field this afternoon. Lined out in the first. And he walked him. Just the sixth walk in 19 innings of work for Oviedo. Well, he has done a nice job when you when you look at his starts outside, like I said, the first inning in Boston. The one common theme is that that fastball slider combination more than anything else has really been in the zone. And that's led to more strikeouts. That's led to more weak contact. That's always a, a recipe for success when you're constantly 0-1, 1-2, 2-2. Mid 90s plus fastball of Oviedo. He's got the breaking ball, the curveball, and he's got that slider and often uses that hard slider 
that people are starting to talk about calling it the diver. We got the sweeper. You got we the got sweeper, the which is we the slow, is like a slur. The diver is the hard slider we that got he throws. The airbender. We got we got all yeah. sorts of stuff. But it's I don't know that anybody throws the diver as well as Oviedo. But, uh, yeah. Oh my, the diver. Timeout is called here by McMahon. One ball, two strikes. McMahon three for seven in the series. Couple of hits last night. Called third strike. That's 97. That's being aggressive to the mid. They're back home tomorrow night. Start a four game series against the National League Central Division rivals. The Cincinnati Reds. It includes a kids Sunday. Weather looks great. Well, there's four games and an off day on Monday, and then the Dodgers are in for their first and only trip in. A three-game series starting Tuesday night. Go to Pirates.com or get your tickets at the MLB Ballpark app. Pirates Reds for four, Pirates Dodgers for three. This upcoming homestand, we talked about the Zoltan Z that Neil Walker and his teammates used as a rallying sign. We got the sword. We got the Zoltan. Yeah, got to have something. Got to have a hook. to have fun with 0 and 2 on Reynolds he lined out to the second baseman Trejo in the first McCutcheon on deck again stay on the attack mode don't that's what other, another thing that Shelton has said he has liked so much this year to, to see guys not give up at bats Yeah, that's definitely not an assessment that I would make when just kind of looking at an overview of this Pirates offense. You know, I'd say opportunistic for sure. When they get chances to run, they run. I'm you know, sure they've run into a few outs here and there. Got thrown out. Stealing it a few times, but in my opinion, that's kind of has to be a part of their game. This Kutch comes up for his second at bat. They have to be opportunistic. They have to give themselves lots of opportunities to score runs. But when the pitching is as good as it's been, it's no surprise to see them have. They've had an opportunity to win every single game mm -hmm. on this road trip. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's the truth. Yep. And I think that's all you can ask for, especially on the road. But more so when you're looking for development, you're looking for. Areas of improvement and things moving forward. You can tell the emphasis they're making in certain parts of their game offensively. And, and for, for me, I, I'm really enjoying watching it in the early part of the season by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Andrew McCutcheon with a high drive to center field. Clear the deck. Cannonball coming for Kutch. Andrew McCutcheon, home run number four this season. The Pirates take a 6 nothing lead. He is back. We're in the black and gold, and we love watching it. 442 feet. Well, this was loud up here in the broadcast booth, Brownie. And in this ballpark, when the center fielder gives us the obligatory six steps and stops, you know you you know you've hit this ball a long way. <laughs> Casual approach with the sword. Wow. Just wow. Cutchin homered on Monday here in the first inning. Take a six nothing lead here in the second inning. And a walk to Santana. 
the third walk for Gomber. Another look at the home run. Mm. Got the guy in the Maryland Muse jersey too. <laughs> Andrew McCutcheon, who's fourth on the all time Pirate home run list, 207 now. Well, yeah, that guy in the purple shirt, he sure wanted this ball. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the Lemieux jersey uh, didn't really give much of an effort. I'm not sure he knew that was near him until <laughs> I guess the too late right <laughs> too late. <laughs> Round ball up the middle a base hit for Connor Joe and Santana. He's going to third. Firing to first base. Joe gets back. More aggressive base running. Carlos Santana right here, first to third. It is it is so rare to see. As you see Connor Joe shoot this one right at the It's so rare to see. And I don't want to call Carlos Santana slow by any means, but he's, he's, he's a former, seven yeah, years old, right? Former catcher, mainly a corner guy. Watch this effort. I mean, they're up, they're up six to nothing. That it, it cannot be understated how, how Carlos and Kutch play this game. The message that it sends to the young guys on this roster and in the organization. Castro takes a call called strike that pitch that was away one and one one out Castro lined out to center field his first time up Andrew McCutcheon career home run number 291 he's 10th on the all time active home run list watch Santana again the age of 37 and playing a whole bunch making his 15th start at first base. And Connor Joe if that opportunity came up he was going to take second. Yeah, that was a hard turn right there. McMahon very aware of, of that and made a move toward the ball to keep him at first. Keep the double play in order. Line drive left field base hit. Huh, seven nothing. Some of you. And, and the Rockies relievers are nowhere to be found. They're hiding. They don't want any part of this. I don't Who know. could blame them? We could finally see some movement down there. I don't think here, here they, they are running down there now. I don't think most of them were down there to start the game. But the hits just keep coming for the Pittsburgh Pirates. The way they are hitting the ball, the way they're running, it's shades of the uh, the lumber and lightning era of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Going back to the mid to late 70s. Mark Mathias drew a walk in the first. Seven runs, eight hits. Two and one. Yep. Trying to get ready in a hurry. Jake Bird. And even on Matthias, who again went four for five on Monday. The Pirates acquired him from the Texas Rangers in spring training, started the year at AAA Indianapolis. He's putting up good numbers there. The 
injury to O'Neill Cruz. An opportunity for Matthias. Rodolfo Castro getting the bulk of the starts at short. And a line drive base hit into left center field for Matthias. Of course, he's headed towards second. He's there with a double. <laughs> the Pirates are leading eight to nothing, and there's just no stop in this Bucko Club. Everything is being barreled, racing around the bases. I don't know what to tell you, Greg. I mean, well, we haven't seen this in years. The Pirates just keep taking what the Rockies are pitching staffs giving them. They're not trying to do too much. We've seen one home run to this point. But watch Mark busting it out of the box right here. Ends up being a fairly close play at second base, but that effort. Oh boy. And now Jack Sawinski to right. Blackman back at the edge of the track. Makes the catch. Sack fly. Good swing on it against the lefty pitcher. Sawinski gets a ribby. And the Pirates have taken a 9-0 lead in the second inning. That says it all right there. The manager of the Rockies, Bud Black. And Jack just misses a home run by a good 20 feet. He got the height right, just not the distance, but nonetheless gets a run in for the Pirates. And now Jason DeLay. A two run single in the first. And bounced to the second baseman Trejo. Just enjoy Andrew McCutcheon. His home run. Started the inning. It's his fourth of the season. 207th as a bucko, 9-0. Part of that crew, in fact, all four there are working uh, the hockey game Avalanche and Kraken. And uh, Amy, of course, the daughter of uh, the late great Nellie King, longtime Pirate broadcaster, former Pirates pitcher, and she does great work at uh, PNC Park on our AT&T Sportsnet crew. And uh, they're showing what we just showed you, uh, the pro. <laughs> that's, uh, I think that's a, a tribute to our director Pete Toma. Am I right, bro? One and two on Mike Moustakis. No shortage of entertainment in this city this week since we've been here, huh? Nuggets playing in the playoffs, yeah. Avalanche playing in the playoffs. A lot of stuff going on. Pass the pitcher. That's okay. Castro there. Oviedo. Whiffs on that, but his shortstop is there. You come out to PNC Park. Make sure you check out the Pirates Cove located in section 201 to 205. All you can eat value seats include unlimited hot dogs, nachos, popcorn, peanuts, and soda. Special discounts available for groups of 10 or more. Go to pirates.com slash cove. Hope you will check it out as the Pirates are back home. Take on the Cincinnati Reds tomorrow night for four games. Come out out and see these guys. There's Andrew McCutcheon and Keenan Smith and Jigba who has talked about this before a young player and that Andrew McCutcheon you go to him or some of the other veterans Carlos Santana play goes 3 1 routine and how valuable the veterans have been Smith and Jigba said anytime you go to Kutch he always gives you the right answer a great answer and he's so cool he's like the coolest guy ever that is very that is a very true assessment of Kutch. There are not many people for the Kutch. Harold Castro takes a strike. His first start of the series, he's in center field. 
four out of 27 at the plate. And a line drive caught by Castro. Oviedo ducking out of the way. One, two, three. Get back to the fat rack, boys. Early on, today and in this entire series. I mean, be aggressive, be aggressive, try to have fun for the game and, and try to finish strong that series. So we're playing good, swing good, running good, different good. Everything is good, so we have to keep it up. This team has done so many small things so well. You just went first to third and scored. What is the key to setting that example for you, Carlos? Um, they decided. They like it. Uh, how how would I play, how run the base. I think he's positive and, and, and that you try to follow me. Uh, how would I play baseball? Congratulations on a great start, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Greg. Robbie, thank you. Exit velocities today. Thanks to Carlos Santana. The, the uh, exit velos, if you're into that kind of thing. And yes, that is today. That's <laughs> not the entire series. Or, uh, you know, this that first inning was our ears were starting to hurt up here yeah. with how loud the balls were getting hit. And they kept it going in that second inning as well. Austin Gomber goes two innings. When well, comes Jake Bird trying to keep this game where it's at his ninth appearance of the year with a six five nine and two thirds 12 K's and four walks. Though Hayes was one for two line double to start this ball game and then lined out in that first inning. So he now has a six game hitting streak. High pop foul ground the third baseman McMahon. He's fouls out to Ryan McMahon to start this third. Bring up Brian Reynolds, who has lined out and struck out. Jack Sawinski there with uh, Austin Hedges. Two strikes. Sun shining. Enjoying some good grub here. And Reynolds strikes out. Brings up Andrew McCutcheon. Two for two. Double homer. Our past performance brought to you by Point Park University. Take you back to April 26, 2016, the three homer game for Andrew McCutcheon. Here at Coors Field, yep, pointing to the direction. Everything covered. I'm sure you remember that game, Neil. One of those home runs. And that's a shot. Mm. Oh, shortstop Tovar. Yes, oh. McCutcheon hit that one hard. The Pirates go down in order. Lead nine to nothing. Partnering with PNC to support local small businesses. This month's business and flowers, located in Highland Park, and flowers. An award-winning floral design studio hosting flower arranging parties for weddings, intimate gatherings, and much more. Learn more. Pirates.com slash small business. Ezekiel Tovar against Oviedo. 
Well, if you're Oviedo, you just stay in attack mode for every single pitch. Even if you end up getting burned in a couple times, last thing you want to do is give up free passes, hit guys, and make this struggling Rockies team find a way to creep back into this great this game. Well, take care of that. There's one. Always wonder about a guy, how he handles a big lead. Well, we talked a lot about the fact that the last two starts, he's thrown in very low scoring games. The one, one nothing win against the White Sox and the one nothing loss against the St. Louis Cardinals. And we know that Oviedo has gone on record in saying that that keeps that little chip on his shoulder and keeps him on edge as the game goes along. And it seems to me, at least in the early going of this game, that he's approaching this no different than those low scoring games. Fly ball off the bat of the catcher serve. And I think that last pitch was that diver we talked about that struck out Tovar. And this pitch fly out to left will bring up Profar. Back to the top of the order. Profar struck out looking in the first. Two O count on the 30 year old veteran. Spent the last three years with the Padres. First five seasons in the big leagues with Texas. He falls behind him 3 0. Charlie Blackman on deck. Profar signed third week of March. Just the fifth time he's walked this season to go along with 15 strikeouts. Second walk for Oviedo. Here's Blackman. Oscar Marine pitching coach, Bradley Haddad, strategy coach. Game planning and strategy coach is Bradley Haddad. Foul tip. And a line towards center. And a nice running catch made there by Sawinski. Completes the bottom of the third. It's 9 0. Pirates. by your Western Pennsylvania Toyota dealers here at Coors Field in Denver conclude the road trip try to sweep the Rockies and then their eighth straight loss here is Carlos Santana Robbie had a chance to catch up with the veteran first baseman an RBI single in the first and then scoring on the double by Connor Joe and then walking in the second scored another run here he retired as Jake Bird sets down the first four batters he faces in relief of Austin Gomber. Gave up nine runs, nine hits in two innings of work. Connor Joe, two for two. Yeah, definitely a forgettable start for Austin Gomber today, but I think I'd say he's got to tip his cap also to the Pirates offense for having a terrific approach against them in those first two innings. Trying to figure out what's going on these days. They are really, really struggling. Coming in with a record of 5 and 13. Hunt. 
three and one. So two for five last night. Robbie caught up with him after the game. And he wanted to give credit to the entire team. He had uh, two hits, leadoff double in the fourth inning that started the four run rally. Later tripled in the seventh. Jake Bird gets the strikeout. Sugardale Dollar Dog Days are back. Thursday home games at PNC Park. First one tomorrow night. Pirates Reds, 635. One dollar hot dogs at select concession stands. Thanks to Sugardale. Take advantage of that. Come on out. See the Bucks. Grab a dog or two. Now Rodolfo Castro, who has lined out to center and singled in a run. Win. Kicking up here. Yeah, definitely a little, a little cold in the, the last two games. But we've skated around some weather patterns around us to this point. Hopefully, stays away. And we've talked a lot about Castro working with Andy Haynes on that left handed swing approach. Continues to work at that. Coach always working those guys. No days off for them. Ah. I'm talking about not trying to do too much really from either side of the plate. And Jake Bird has settled things down. Six up, six down for him. And the Pirates still up nine, nothing. Things. Giving all the runs to Johan Oviedo. Oviedo will now face Chris Bryant to start this fourth inning. Bottom half. Bryant walked in the first. Two spot the first two games of the series. Two and oh. Couple of walks for Oviedo. Three strikeouts. All three. 25 years old. Cuban defector. Pirates acquired him from the Cardinals last summer. Bryant is in the second year of his seven year, $182 million free agent contract, the former Cub, and a leadoff free pass. Brings up McMahon. Kids Day is coming up on May the 7th against the Blue Jays at PNC Park. Fun and games on Family Fun Zone on Federal Street before the ball game. And Sunday, May 7th, all kids 14 and under get a Pirates bat and ball set thanks to Allegheny Health Network. Get more info and see the 2023 Kids Days promotions at Pirates.com slash Kids Days. Brown single to right for McMahon. And Bryant goes to third. Oh, my man places this ball perfectly through that four hole. Losing first to third. You definitely take, happily take a two for one right here if you can get it. If you're over, Johan Oviedo. Hasn't been super sharp with his location today. Sometimes that can happen, especially your first time throwing in this environment here. And not used to the ball not spinning the way it normally does, or the sinker or two seamer not quite moving the way it, the way it does. 
Not close for that fastball to Moustakis. Talked a lot about Chris Bryant's career numbers against the Pirates, but Moustakis actually has a higher OPS lifetime. And 21 home runs in 66 games against Pittsburgh. Bryant, 20 homers in 100 games against the Pirates. Wow, those are, those are big numbers. <laughs> Stockus tells the umpire, I'm not ready yet, and the umpire tells Oviedo, give him a chance. It's this one high to left, and that wind kicking it back. For Reynolds, sack fly, first out in the fourth. Stockus who hit a ball the other way. We talked before the game yesterday about the, the little things, and it continued last night in the 5-3 win. Derek Shelton pointed out some of the plays that were made defensively, including the ball that Reynolds caught in the eighth inning off the bat of Moustakis. Here's Trejo. Two. That's where Oviedo wants to be. Maybe the counts. To these Rockies. He made one start here a couple years ago as a member of the Cardinals. And six innings gave up three runs on seven hits in that game. Fouled off past first base coach Ron Gideon. Warren Schaefer, the third base coach, the Greensburg Central Catholic product. And his first year's third base coach for the Rockies. His mom and dad, James and Karen, likely tuned in. Former summer ball player of mine. And talking to people in this Rockies organization. He's, he's very well loved, obviously played a a while as a minor leaguer in this organization, managed a while in this organization. The last two years was managing AAA in Albuquerque. Dropped at second by Matthias on the throw by Castro to try and get a force there. That didn't look good. Yeah, it's kind of a strange ball right here that Rudy gets to and does a, a nice job picking it. Should, would be out if that ball was caught. Thais just gets handcuffed a little bit, hits off the pinky of his glove. And that's the one thing in these games with big leads, you just you just want to secure outs that should be outs. Yeah, you don't want to take a casual approach to anything. Now Santana guns it to Castro, who fakes the throw to first. That was an E4, by the way, on Matthias. It's always a tough call as a shortstop whether you should throw to, the fir to first base with the pitcher covering. You always have to know the athleticism of the, each guy that's on the mound, who can handle it and who can't. Two. On Sekiel Tobar struck out in the third. Oh. 
Ground ball Castro. Underhand toss to Matthias. Makes the catch. We played four. It's 9 1 Pirates. Google Cloud. How about the hard hit balls? And hard hit balls are defined by the ball traveling 95 miles an hour or harder in StatCast jargon. And the Pirates, a lot of them. As you can see, none really to the hard pull side. Everything in dead center of the field. Yeah. And they did almost an identical thing on Monday in the first game of the series to Kyle Friedland. Mark Mathias. 11 balls hit 95 miles an hour or harder. Mathias had a hard hit double in the second. Driving in a run. He's also walked. Facing Jake Bird. And that's hard hit. Oh, what a pick there by Tovar, the shortstop. Heck of a play by Ezekiel Tovar. Another squared up ball by the Pittsburgh Pirates. This one off the bat of Mark Mathias. And Tovar makes a really nice play. Those top spinning balls, you're not 100% sure how they're going to come off the dirt when they hit. If they have a little side spin on it. Just top spin, they tend to feel sometimes that they pick up speed. Jack Sawinski now against the righty. He's walked and hit a sacrifice fly. Just missed going deep against the left handed starter, Gomber. Two and oh on Sawinski. Jake Bird's third inning now of work. Pitched a, a scoreless inning on Monday. He has struck out three here in this outing. And he struck out all three of the four batters he faced on Monday. And two. He gets the help right there. Lefty is hitting just 150 against Jake Bird this year. Right handed batters 400. Reverse split guy. Hmm. Whoops. Second time he's drawn a walk this afternoon. First batter to reach against Bird. Nice job by Jack. Three homers combined in the first two days of this series. His two walks and a sack fly so far in this game. And Jason Alea, two run single in the first inning for the Pirates. And Jason DeLay cracks one toward left center field. And this ball will bounce up over the wall, and the Rockies get a break. Unfortunately, DeLay has an RBI taken away because of it. And he squared that one up. Jason's second hit of the day, single in the first inning. This one looks like a little lazy cutter that maybe backs up a little bit or something. Like I said, if this ball doesn't hop over the wall, Jackson Wincy scores from first base easily. Now the infield forced to play in with Key Brian Hayes at the plate. What is it, Neil, about right-handed hitters hitting well over 400 against Bird, and he does so well against lefties? What does that usually indicate? Well, he's he's got the, he's, he's about 60% fastball, 25% cutter, and that cutter seems to have 
pretty good depth. And I think sometimes he gets in trouble with that cutter as we saw on that pitch to Jason Lay with the righties. It, it almost goes a little more into their barrels than, and I think that cutter plays better against the lefties as it's bearing down, down and in or, or belt and in because the fastball velo is not tremendously high. He's able to get Hayes the infield in and those runners have to hold. Ryan Reynolds will bat left handed against the righty and looking for his first hit. The only man not to reach yet in this game. A line out and a couple of strikeouts. Second look now at Jake Bird however for Reynolds. Bird struck him out in the third. Bird like Pirates starter veteran Rich Hill grunts after every pitch. One and one. The whole plate up here, Adam Beck has been pretty. Wow. Pretty fair or pretty un <laughs> I can't say unfair, but that was unfair. <laughs> that was definitely. Call that a strike. But he has been somewhat consistent. That one even further out. He, we saw him call that early in the game, but for some reason he's he's seeing that up and away a little bit differently than typical umpires. Mm. Boy, oh boy, that you know, that that can it takes so what a different approach now. Everything changes. He's not throwing a strike yet to Reynolds. Mm. Well, I mean, you real Reynolds just said, you've got to be kidding me. Hey, who can blame him? Didn't throw him really a strike, and he just mm. got tossed. Reynolds got ejected. And Reynolds frustrated, and again, I, with all due respect, for a hitter, that's just hard to take. Yeah, and I think when he looks back at this at bat, it's going to be tough. He's going to see he missed a couple calls. On Oviedo now faces the catcher, Brian Serban. So Jack Sawinski moves from center field to left field, and G1 Bay is in center. Andy Haynes can't be pleased either, the hitting coach. I mean, Neil, it's one thing to give a pitcher occasional strikes, but boy, when the hitter doesn't see a strike at all. Yeah. You know, we, we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday. You, you're, you're usually familiar with the umpire's quote unquote hot zones and cold zones. Here's that last pitch, by the way, to Reynolds. And this was actually probably the best pitch that he threw him the entire at bat. The first two strikes that Brian took were even further off and above the strike zone. So you can understand his frustration. Well, there's that diver pitch. Reynolds reacts. And he's basically saying the same thing. I didn't see a strike the whole time and I get called out. Well, he gave him the equipment violation warning and then I'm sure he said, you can't, you gotta keep it on the plate. You know, it's one mm. thing to give up one pitch, maybe in a bat or every two at bats, but that was a good, all three pitches were not necessarily strikes. Pro far. Walked his last time up. Big swing from Profar. Hmm. It's a disappearing slider. Not the diver, but the one that kind of cuts in a little bit more. Two and two. 
We'll be interested to see, you know, you know the next time he faces the Cardinals. You know, he, he had their, yeah. Johan had his way with the Cardinals with that slider mm -hmm. and breaking ball. And you know, I consider the Cardinals, even though they didn't have a good offensive series, a, a team that adjusts pretty well, especially with some of the veteran offensive players, like Contreras, Arenado, Goldschmidt. So we'll be interested to see that next time out there, how they approach him. Santana, 3-1 put out. But make no mistake, this is an elite, elite slider, elite curveball, mid-upper 90s fastball. We got a, we got something special in this, mm -hmm. in this guy. I yep. can tell you that. Big horse. 6'5", <laughs> 245. Charlie Blackman, 0 for 2, line to center his last time up. Oviedo's scoreless inning streak ends at uh, 18 and a third. Last inning, the Rockies scoring the run, the leadoff walk to Chris Bryant hmm. proved costly. <laughs> and Charlie just got the Brian Reynolds treatment right there, the backdoor slider. And he calls a timeout. Gets him. Not sure, was that the diver? I think it was. I think it was. Struck him out with a diver. Nine, one bucks. Just delivery of the game, Andrew McCutcheon. He's delivered. Uh, base hit for an RBI double, I should say, in the first inning. Second inning. Or third inning, I should say. Yes, yeah, second inning, I'm sorry. Big home run. Then a hard hit 6 3 in his third at bat. It's hot. Faces the lefty tie block. Oviedo talking to Mendy Lopez added to the coaching staff this year. See how McCutcheon fares against this lefty tie block. He pitched two plus innings on Monday. McCutcheon was 0 for 2 against him. A couple of ground balls, one hard hit to the shortstop. When McCutcheon was up last week, showed you his three homer game here back in 2016. We'll take a look at Blox's numbers. And uh, we didn't get a chance for Neil to respond when we asked him. And we said, Neil, you remember that? Well, of course, you know, Neil was not a pirate then in 16. He was with the Mets, but the Mets had finished up their game against the Cincinnati Reds on that very day. And the reason I asked you that, Neil, is because one of the three home runs that McCutcheon hit was off Christian Bergman. Does that name ring a bell? Christian Bergman? The right-handed pitcher for the Rockies. You had a six RBI game here. We, we talked about mm -hmm. it last night. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one of your, your home run that you hit was off Bergman. Of course. <laughs> How could I forget? I, I know you hadn't. I just wanted to double check. So that's it's all come around. So you and McCutcheon both hit home runs on Bergman. <laughs> yeah, monkey and see, monkey do, you know. And, that's, and that's just, why I asked that's just you how we do, if you remembered that day. <laughs> <laughs> when the Mets were playing the Reds, the game had finished up. You had a quick game against the Reds. And I know you were watching the Pirates playing the Rockies later that night. Well, I, I, I will say that I, I would watch of many guys Andrew was was one of them that I obviously when I left yeah. w was watching. Sure. So I don't I, I remember him having the three run run three home run game, but I don't remember the logistics and the specifics of it. So I'll just refresh your memory. That's all. Thank you. Little dribbler McCutcheon will be the first out. A tie block. It's McCutcheon jam shot. Play made by the catcher Brian Servin. Touching all his hustling down. McCutcheon and the Pirates return to PNC Park. Your chance to see these Bucks tomorrow night against the Reds, four gamer. And then the Dodgers are in for three starting on Tuesday night.
McNeil remembers playing against the Reds. Well, a couple times. Yeah. I won't be with you this weekend. What? Johnny, I'll miss you. What are you, what are you doing? What do you mean? Tell me you're back. going skiing. I'm going skiing. Oh. Call golfing. I'll probably be golfing. Yeah. Good chance. <laughs> But so uh, when will we see you again, Neil? Do you know yet? You'll see me on pre and post next weekend. Okay. Uh, when the team's in uh, Washington. All right. And then I'll be, I'll be on the uh, the following week. Week. It's been fun having Neil on this trip. He's brought the Buckos good luck. I I enjoy it. I, I really do enjoy what I'm doing and working with you and and Joe and. Kevin, yeah, all we the got guys. a good crew. We don't. We really do. Of course, the folks at AT&T Sportsnet make it easy. Two and two. They don't like to have fun though in the truck, do they? No, no, no. It's it's hard. Right? You got to you got to pull out the personalities yeah. down there. Yeah. Toma and Steele, yeah. Elmore, Brownie, They're Joe and KY on the radio side here. Well, it's kind of surprising. It's getting cold here as, as we see. Yeah, what do you see? Where's, where's their, their ski caps? Where's their beanies? They had yeah. them on in St. Louis, and it's colder today, I think, than it was maybe in St. Louis. Good, good point. Mm. And the, the windows are open, right? Yeah, we got to talk to them about that. Yeah. Santana bounces this one up the middle. He's on base for a third time. Carlos Santana. RBI single in the first, a walk in the third, scored both times. Here in the sixth, a single, and just really, really has started off the season well from that right side, from both sides, but particularly the right side. That's always really fun as a, as a switch hitter if you get on a good run because you know that you don't get so many at bats from that side. Connor Joe fouls it back out of play. He's a fan of Connors and Blocks. Well, I know Connor Joe. He wasn't here for a long time, but he turned into one of the fan favorites. Everybody we talked to, he saw him the first two days of on-field batting practice. Almost every single guy on that rocky side came over, wanted to chat with him. Very well respected. And he's done a really good job as we've talked about so many times in the early part of the season and you know, we weren't quite sure how the Pirates were going to use him but he's forced their hand to to be in what what's basically an everyday role and not just against lefty starters or just in right field he, we've seen him bounce around a little bit play a little bit of first base you always got to appreciate guys like this that just grind their way into the lineup every day and he's got himself another hit his third hit. Oh, how impressive these two guys, Santana and Joe, have been to watch. Just, just good mm. piece of hitting. Middle of the field, ball's a little bit off the plate, change up. It's easy to roll that ball over, especially in a 9 1 game. It's much easier to give it bats away. Pirates team not doing that. Castro one for three. RBI single in the second. Pirates scored four times. It's a high fly ball to center. Cindy Castro back to the wall and clear the deck. Cannonball coming. Rudy. Hits a three run bomb to center field. You were born to wear that jersey, Rudy. And a 12 1 Bucko lead. 106 off the bat right here from Rudy. Off the bat, it looked like it was going to be somewhat of a, a ball that might have pushed center fielder Harold Castro back to the warning track. And then it just kept carrying. And we mentioned that the wind's blowing a little bit here. So I think it might have assisted a little bit, but make no mistake, that ball was crushed. Second home run this season for Rodolfo Castro. 12-1, yes. Nicely done. 
both on this road trip too. Oof, talk about launch angle right here. Oh. This right-handed swing, I'm just so impressed as a former switch hitter too with, with his right-handed swing. It's, it's short, it's compact, it's powerful. There's no wasted movement. This is the Pirates' 19th game of the season. It's the third time they've scored as many as 10 runs. Another look at the homer to dead center. A no-doubter. The Pirates scored 10 or more runs three times all of last year. Already the third time this season. Wash buckling buckos. Just an absolute blast to watch these guys right now. And want to stress to you again about <laughs> they're coming back home. They're going to be back at PNC Park tomorrow night. Let's go to the ballpark app, go to pirates.com. Four with the Reds and then three with the Dodgers. Matthias, his second hit on base for a third time. He was four for five on Monday. Here's Jack Sawinski against Ty Block. Fourteen hits and a dozen runs. Bounce to third. McMahon to second. He won't get two. It is the second out over at second base. 5 4 put out erases Matthias and brings up Jason DeLay. Adolfo Castro. Three run blast to center. Jason Delay, two hits on the day so far. A couple RBIs. Hitting a cool 300 for the season. Limited backup duty. Although got a lot of, got a good string of starts the third week of the season when Austin Hedges was out for a period of time. It's his third start this trip. Ninth start of the season, and he's got himself another hit. A three hit day for Jason DeLay. Hitches keep on coming. <laughs> this another lazy curveball slider. This is a Mezica. <laughs> Hayes started this ball game by ripping a double into the left center gap. Six game hitting streak for him. And his fifth at bat here in the sixth inning. I mean, he's on, he's on pace for six at bats today. Chopper. And he'll be set down, but the Pirates get three more. Santana, Joe with singles, Castro the homer. Official legal partner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And by your Western PA Chevy dealers. Let's go, Bucks! Rodolfo Castro. It's a home run, 458 feet, 12 1 Pirates. And Oviedo's first pitch, a fly ball to right. Connor Joe over. One pitch, one out, and two outs away from making it nine straight games where a starter goes six or more innings. For Johan Oviedo, Mentioned his scoreless inning streak, which ended his last timeout against the Cardinals. He gave up 
a run against St. Louis in his last start. Just one run, and he's given up one here in hitter friendly Coors Field. 12 to 1. We just talked to Ryan Spielborg's former uh, Rocky. He stopped in talking about the ballpark. Always good seeing Spilly. Yeah, good guy. He, he, he doesn't lack personality no. either. He and Blast must be cousins or something. Yep. And that's a good call. Very similar personalities. Whoa. He's hit for, man, his second hit off Oviedo. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to PNC Park. You can buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Here's the Moose, Mike Moustakis. It's popped up in a sacrifice fly. Pass along our condolences to Marty Corbett, who works and has been a longtime member of the Pirates scoreboard crew at PNC Park, Three River Stadium before that. His mom passed away yesterday. Bib Corbett, Lawrenceville, age of 85. Thinking about Marty, and we're also thinking about Richard Sutton, who lost his wife, Linda. A few days ago, uh, Richard was our producer here. Pirate Games. I was at KDK producing for a number of years and thinking about you, Richard. One and two. And on Moustakis with one out. Moustakis delivered a sacrifice fly in the fourth. Upstairs in the zone. And the stock has, comes up empty. What's well, looking like no, he that might, slider up sometimes. No, that was, that was kind of a, a backup slider. Not the diver. The diver darts down and away to righty hitters. And I was going to say it's looking like Oviedo's with his 80th pitch right here is going to get himself through six innings again. Another quality start for this Pirates pitching staff and man how much fun has that been just to yeah. kind of see the progression and, and just know that these guys you know the game is going to tell them manager Derek Shelton when to hook these guys and not like oh third time through the order we got to be careful these guys are oh ooh. just over the head of Rodolfo Castro the, the leash is off the, yeah they're still guys, longer like so they, two times through the order I agree it, it, it almost could you just, as the third time through approach, you just watch the bullpen start yeah, working, and yeah. they just weren't going to let these starters see a lineup a third time. But now, as you said, they're letting these guys go deeper into games. They're helped by the fact that the the starters are being more conservative with their their pitchers, their pitches. And you can feel it, you know, in in, in the clubhouse and. Out on the field, you're talking to these guys. They're they're talking the right way. They're they're. It's it's no longer about you know opportunities and getting opportunities. It's about finding ways to win every single night. And I think that sends a big message, not just in the major league locker room, but also for the the guys coming up in Double A, Triple A, understanding that when they get here, the precedent is already set. It's this is how it's going to be. There's you know the kid gloves are off when you step foot in the major leagues and that's the way it should be. Popped it up left field Sawinski. And that makes nine straight starts for Bucko hurlers six or more innings. At bat to Brian Reynolds a strike is called. That was outside. That was not close. Strike called. Three pitches called out on strikes. And you can understand how upset Reynolds is. And he gets tossed. So it's Jiwan Bay at the plate now instead of Reynolds. His spot in the order. 
you know, and you see the pitch right there in that same spot that Brian Reynolds saw a couple. So it's 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 clear that you know Adam Beck, that's his hot zone, and you know as a hitter, you just you just have to be aware of it. But the other way for G1 Bay slaps a single to left off the lefty tie block. You know we've seen G1 Bay do this. A couple times, I mean, look how far off the plate this is. Holy cow! Jeez. <laughs> and he just kind of gets out there, holds his hands back, and and slaps it. This is number one. It's a hard pitch to get to in general, but and number two, it's a hard pitch to keep fair if you do put it in play. And he barreled it up as well. Here is Andrew McCutcheon, and McCutcheon with a fly ball to left toward the foul pole, and gonna go foul. RBI double in the first. Solo homer in the second. Well, and, and, and more than that, if this, you know, if we can get into this eighth, ninth inning with the same, you know, call it a 10 plus run lead, you might be able to give some offensive players a, a, a little bit of a break. We got. You know, a long, long flight back home today. You're losing two hours. You got, you're strapping it on tomorrow for a four-game series against the Reds. You know, Bednar takes a ball, a line drive off the, the side of his butt. Per, I guess you could say yesterday. Be nice not to have to see him. Holderbin's been used a lot on this road trip. We haven't seen him yet in this series. So, the timing is good for this, this series number one, but also. Um, to head back home 17 straight games in a row doesn't matter what time of year it is 17 straight games in a row is is challenging more so for the pitching staff especially the the relievers and this series they've been able to at least give some guys blows and, and it looks like they're going to give themselves a good opportunity to close this thing out and head back home. Yeah, Kutch didn't necessarily agree with this one. But like we said, Adam Beck has been given that inner half. Carlos Santana. On base three times. Santana came in hitting 471 against left handed pitching. Oh my. Oh, we wanted that one. <laughs> he had a couple of hits against Ty Block on Monday. Hmm. Two and two on Carlos Santana. Pirates sent 10 men to the plate in the first inning and scored five times. Santana had an RBI single and scored. Scored on a double all the way from first base. Double hit by Connor Joe off the right center field fence. Santana then walked the next inning and scored. Last inning, a base hit. Adolfo Castro had a three run homer. We're chill talking to Johan Oviedo, who appears done for the day. Pirates have their bullpen working. And line drive center field. But caught by Castro. Pirates 2023 Hall of Fame class will be announced tomorrow night. Be sure to join us for Pirates pregame at 6 o'clock. Unveiling this year's class to be inducted into the Pirates Hall of Fame. Class of 2023 announced here on AT&T Sportsnet tomorrow night on the pregame. There's Connor Joe. Johan Ramirez who was called up. This road trip. Up in the pen.
Joe with a three hit day. Five hits in this series for Connor Joe. Standing road trip. Currently hitting 348 on the year. Two balls, two strikes. The Pirates will see all right handed pitchers for the Reds starting tomorrow night. It's Luke Weaver to make his 2023 debut. Rowansi Contreras starts. For the Pirates against Cincinnati at PNC Park. Deep third, fair ball, long throw across, and McMahon gets the job done. Pirates up 12 to 1. Sid Miller, who made his major league debut today for the Oakland A's through four and a third innings, gave up two runs, the first run he ever gave up in his career, who remembered to a fellow Pittsburgher. Mount Lebanon's Ian Happ with a double to get the scoring going. He pitched three seasons at uh, Waynesburg University, then went on to finish his career at Gardner Webb, collegiate career. He was drafted third round uh, in 2021 by the Oakland A's. But more importantly, you might be wondering why are we mentioning Mason Miller in his major league debut? Because he is a Bethel Park High School alum. His first uh, Bethel Park grad actually to play in Major League Baseball. Played only 11 total games in the minor leagues, Reagan Neal. Pretty impressive. So we wish him nothing but the best. And can you imagine if in June, when the Oakland A's come to Pittsburgh to face the Pirates, should Mason Miller be able to start one of those games? It would be the day to remember forever for him and his family. And a big congratulations to Mason Miller on his big league debut. Another Pittsburgher in the show. Neil, I know you got to be proud. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And Johan Ramirez, as we're seeing, just missed the Sheely's numbers there. For him, his first start, or his first appearance in 2023, and the first pitch he throws, ends up in the arm of Ezekiel Tovar. As you see the movement, big movement. Guy, and I just clips it. Two seam, slider guy. Oh boy. Called up when uh, Pirates placed Rob Sestrisny on the injured list. Ramirez had a 113 ERA and five relief outings with Triple A Indianapolis this season. Not throwing a strike yet, three pitches in. 22 appearances last year with the Pirates after they got him from Cleveland in a trade in July. A strike. Oh, a little chilly. Look at him. He's having a fun time there. Chill vibe. Foul ball. A neat story about Mason Miller, though, making his debut a Waynesburg Yellow Jacket. There have been two previous players out of that school to make it to the big leagues. Got to go back to the 40s and 50s. Dick Gray and Chuck Coles. Long time coming. A lot of folks in the South Hills are watching the A's. And, uh, Neil, thanks for catching that bit of news this morning. Really cool stuff. Yeah, always keeping keeping an eye on the local yep. baseball products. And it seems like there's just more and more every time you turn around. Talent has really gotten a lot better over the course of the last 10 years, but we have a Bethel Park guy in Altoona and Justin mm -hmm. Mice. And so that's, I mean, that's really neat. And those two guys, Mason Martin and Mice, were are two years apart or were two years apart it's at, at Bethel Park High School. So. Fly ball to left. Serban is retired. You're always looking to help the local local kids. You've got showcase events you help with. Yeah, you know, in the I, summer. I think just in general, that's something that that's a passion of mine. I, I feel like it's my perspective of, of baseball and, and being so fortunate and lucky to play 
at the major league level for as long as I did, and in the bulk of that being in Pittsburgh, I, I I knew that I knew how difficult it was in that part of the country in comparison to other parts of the country. Uh, it was, and the amount of time you travel to Tennessee and Georgia and Florida and Texas just to get seen uh, by by scouts and college coaches and all of that. So. You know, it was one of my goals when I finished up to try to make things a little easier for the guys in our region, call it Eastern Ohio, Western PA, Northern West Virginia, because the talent is there. We, you know, it's always it's always kind of been there, not in bulk like some of these other areas, but um, it's there. And if you can help a guy get in front of maybe a school that doesn't necessarily know about him, that's that's something that I take a lot of pride in. Good work, Johan Ramirez, to strike out Profar. Well, that's good stuff from Neil Walker. Yes. Johan Ramirez strikes out Profar. He'll now face Charlie Blackman. Well, that's a really good slider right there. Settled in after the first couple pitches were all arm side fastballs. Blackman 0 for 3. <laughs> he's gotten Charlie a couple times too. I, I can see how frustrated he's been both. Both pitches to start. Yeah, so timeout. I gotta regroup here. He did, he's done the same thing. His la this at bat and the one before a backdoor slider that did not get on the plate. And Charlie stepped out, regrouped. He's a professional. It certainly can be frustrating. Andrew McCutcheon was called out on strikes he didn't agree with, and of course. Adam Beck has already tossed Brian Reynolds. Two and one. Before we leave the uh, Waynesburg subject, with a player appearing in the big leagues out of that school, Waynesburg University. Longtime voice of the Pirates, Lanny Frateri, has been down there at Waynesburg teaching broadcasting classes. And our uh, associate director, Drew Brown, is a Waynesburg alum. AT&T Sportsnet, ball four. It's Chris Bryant against Johan Ramirez. 22 appearances last year with the Pirates. 27 innings, a 3.67 ERA, and now a Pinch hitter, Alahiris Montero, bats for Bryant. Does that surprise you? Bryant's a DH. He's had three plate appearances. It makes you think that he might not be healthy. Something happened along the way. Yeah, we might have caught him. Uh you know, limping a tiny bit earlier in the game. He was originally slated to play right field too. Yeah. A late switch there. He and Charlie Blackman switched. And he and he went from first to third on the one ball. Yeah. And it, I didn't notice anything big, but I noticed him just a tiny bit. So, you know, given the circumstances, bottom of the seventh, 12 run game. Oh, he's out in the dugout, so maybe yeah. it was just the obligatory, hey, take a breather. Just when you get the chance to get at bats here in this ballpark and against a kind of an inexperienced pitcher. And the strike on the appeal. <laughs> that look of these hitters. The call doesn't go their way. Started at third base on Monday. Well, Daniel Bard is back. He had uh, been on the injured list with uh, anxiety issues. Order will see him on the mound. Might be a good time to get him some work. Well, Harris Montero. Was 0 for 3, struck out twice on Monday, and committed two errors. Yeah. 
It goes full. Well, runners will be moving here. Three, two. Runners on first and second. Johan Ramirez in his 2023 Pirates debut pitches a scoreless seventh inning. The Pirates lead by 11. It's brought to you by UPMC Sports Medicine, helping athletes and active people bring it every day. And by Sheely's, locally owned and operated for over 70 years. The best things in life happen at home. Let's go Bucks! Rodolfo Castro will lead things off here in the eighth inning for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He has a couple of hits. There's a line drive base hit RBI single in the second. That was off the starter, the lefty Austin Gomber, and then against the lefty Ty Block. A three-run homer to center, 458 feet. And he'll come to the plate here against Daniel Bard. Four of you guys on the day for Rudy. Up the 12, for the 12 driven in. For this hot Pirates offense. Daniel Bard last season, 57 games. 34, 37 in the save category. 1-8, 60 innings, 69 strikeouts. Was one of their all stars last year. Incredible story. Daniel Bard had retired from the game. Last pitched for the Red Sox in 2013 and then returned seven years later. Bounced around five different organizations, gave them some opportunities. Pirates for a time. And a high fly ball to center field, sending Castro back. And mm. Harold. Castro makes the catch. <laughs> I think he thought he got enough of that one. Greg, hmm. he's walking off the field with his helmet off. That would have been the uh, the old switch hitter holy grail, the one from each side yeah. of the game. You're nothing cooler than that. Well, we can't exactly tell how the wind's affecting some of these balls, but the look on his face tells me he thought that that might have hit a little bit of a jet stream. And it knocked it down. Mark Mathias on base three times, two hits. Castro definitely thought he got it. Mathias to the shortstop. Tovar, two outs. Sawinski will face Daniel Bard. That's a that's a an elite fraternity homering from both sides of the plate in the same game. Neil Walker knows that feeling. Did it as a Yankee against the Texas Rangers. I mean, it's cool to do it as a Pirate or any I guess any uniform, but who is a Yankee? To I, I did it twice professionally, once in the minor leagues and once in the major wow. leagues. It's you don't really think a whole lot of it. I mean, two home runs in one game in general is is, is such a feat. Mm. But to even get the opportunity a lot of times is, is the hardest part. But that was yeah, that was a, that was a really cool that was a really cool game. Bounced might have clipped the glove of the pitcher Bard, and Swinski is retired. So Daniel Bard back after a stint on the IL and a one two three eight. Pirates still up by a bunch. Carlos Santana out of the game. Kenny Smith and Jigba takes over in right. And then Hunter Joe moves from right to first. In the eighth inning. And Smith and Jigba. And McMahon bounces it to second. One out. Well, 
NHN injury update Chase DeYoung making good strides coming coming back from a back strain. He threw a side the other day here in Denver plans to throw a live BP this weekend at PNC Park. We chatted with him today. Neil and I both and uh, he was really excited about the progress feels really good. Yeah both both of us had a chance to just talk to him for a minute and you know sometimes especially having back issues in my career you kind of you, you if you get to that kind of 72 hour window and you feel things moving in the right direction that's obviously a very good sign and if you kind of get past that that three four day mark and you're not having a ton of progress that's when you know you have you know, some issues so it's it was good to hear today that he was he was ramping up and felt good and going to be throwing a, bat, uh, a bullpen or a live batting practice this weekend. I was just seeing in between between inning, innings Browning when we were talking about Mason Martin. He hit 102 miles an hour today as a starter for the for the uh, for the A's. 102. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Moustakis, three and two. This might be one of the worst ones of the day here, Brownie. Huh. Moustakis, can't believe it. So again, Mason Miller, the uh, 2016 Bethel Mason Park Miller, I'm product. Mason Martin, I'm sorry, Mason. This ball's found out of play. Well, it's easy to confuse them because Mason Martin is, uh, I think he hit a grand slam, I think, last night for Altoona. Now we're hitting first baseman of the Pirates organization. Three and two on Moustakis. Moustakis has the only RBI today for these Colorado Rockies. The Pirates have taken it to the Rockies this series. Ball four. Oh dear. In your hat keeping you warm? Pretty stylish. Dinger the mascot. Dinger the dinosaur here. Now Trejo fly ball toward right, and that will go out of play. Ball diving stop Hayes doesn't come up with it cleanly, but look how easy he gets up. He's got that internal clock. Knew he had enough time to get Trejo upset with himself. He doesn't get the double play, but he robs Trejo of a hit, turns it into an out. You're right. I mean, he gets it in between hop. He's probably mad at himself that he didn't secure this and possibly at least get the lead runner. Enter whatever super superlative you'd like. That's that's Key Brian playing third base. You see it on a day daily basis. It's impressive every single time you see him run out there on the defensive side. Ball past Ramirez into center. Well, Castro's RBI with two outs makes it 12 2. And just a heater of the cut. Too much of the plate. Thias does a nice job of trying to track it, but 
Just can't quite get there in time. Tovar, one for two and has been hit by a pitch. Johan Ramirez, stuff from the minor leagues. His 2023 Pirates debut. Trying to give the Pirates at least a couple of innings in relief of Johan Oviedo. Six innings, one run, three hits for the starter. And that's nine straight games now. Pirate starter has gone at least six innings. Ground ball, Castro, and he commits an error. And the inning continues. Rudy gets to this one, just kind of looks like it might have hit the heel of his glove as he was trying to secure it. Yep. Brian Servin now will come in. Discussion there with Adam Beck, the home plate umpire doesn't seem happy with him. Strike one. Oviedo in line to win his second ball game. Another fine start for Oviedo. There's a tough place to pitch. Bouncing ball, Hayes. Nice play there, made it look easy. The final out. Pirates lead by 10. He was a position player twice in a three game series. How about 41 hits? This Look is, at these beautiful colors. And re remember, this is not a four game series, this is a three game no. series. Um, the boys brought the sticks to Denver. This is one thing we know. And when you get to see a position player out there, two of the three games, that's a sign uh, that things are not going well for the opposition. Popped up by Jason DeLay. Catch has made Harold Castro the position player. He was in center field through eight innings. And now he is on the mound. Delay pops out. Jonathan Daza out in center field. He'll take her over for the pitcher as Key Brian Hayes collects his second hit of the day. Take your hacks, boys. G1 Bay will come to the plate. They won at bat, singled off lefty tie block in the seventh inning. This is Reynolds' spot in the order. Reynolds was ejected in the fifth for arguing with the home plate umpire after he was called out on strikes. To Capita Marcano comes out on deck to pinch hit for Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon with two more hits, including. A home run, his fourth of the season, and 207th as a Pirate, and a oh, four-pitch walk. Everybody wants to grab a bat here. Tukapita Marcano. Toward left center field, a long way, and that's going to get down. This is going to score one. And Rebello called off the dogs. As Bay held up. Marcano, pinch hit RBI double. Took takes his best softball swing. 
and find some space out left center field. Kane Smith and Jigba will be the second out and will pick up an RBI. His first at bat brings home the Pirates 14th run. And now Connor Joe. Connor's got three hits in the day. A double, two singles. This is sixth at bat. Thirty three runs in a three game series, the most by a Pirates team on the road since nineteen seventy five. Exaggerated cheer from Rockies fans. How about this? <laughs> oh, now Connor Joe's hit by a pitch. Little laughing at him. Catch is laughing. Oh. Castro's going to bat right handed against this right handed air quotes pitcher. Oh my. I think they take him out of his shoes. Does come out of his shoes with a high fly ball to left. Pirates add two more. They lead 14 to 2. And may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. This Pirates pitching change is brought to you by Sheely's Furniture Appliances and Mattresses. Dowry Moreda. Try and finish things up here. We saw Dowry a couple times in that St. Louis series. It's the first time we've seen him in this series. A little bit of work. This Sheely's numbers on the year. He's 1 0. Two holds, ninth game for him, 3 8, 11 Ks, and seven walks. Johan Ramirez, two innings, one run, one hit, couple of walks, couple of strikeouts. Jerkson Profar is 0 for 2 with a walk against starter Johan Oviedo, who's going to go to 2 and 1. Pirates are going to improve to 12 and 7 on the season. They will have won four of their last five, 11 of their last 16. And again, the last time they scored this many runs in a three game series on the road, September of 1975 against the Cubs at Wrigley. One of those games was a 22 0 whitewash. Of the Cubs. That was the Rennie Stennett 7 for 7 game. 3 and 1 on Profar. This series started out Monday night a 14 3 shellacking. Pirates collecting 16 hits. Moreta walks Profar. Andrew McCutcheon a part of the offensive onslaught. Connor Joe as well. Joe on base four times against his former mates. Has scored three runs. Jack Sawinski in the middle of this offense this whole series. Sacrifice fly today. Couple of walks. There's three homers in the series. Keep Ryan Hayes a six game hitting streak. Two hits today, a couple of runs. Even Jason DeLay, a big three hit day. Jason DeLay, who 
started uh, Thursday and Saturday on this road trip. Mark Mathias. Big part of the offense. Chop. Four, six, three. Takes care of that. Two outs. So Moreda looking for one more out, and the Pirates will be heading home. Cincinnati Reds coming to town. Four games starting tomorrow night. And then next Tuesday, the Dodgers will be in for three. Cuts in there with Oviedo. His ERA down to 222 now for the season. Six innings, one run, three hits. Pirates have out hit the Rockies 18 to 4. Well, the road doesn't get much easier for this Rockies team. They're heading out after this game to face Philadelphia Phillies for four games. How about the impressive run differential for this Pirates team this year? Right now, through 19 games on the year. They're a plus 20. Last year, through that many games, they were minus 35. Much different feel to this year's club. Rada walks Montero. Daza, the center fielder. Brought a position player. So Daza in center. Drawing that walk, he went out to play center in the ninth as Harold Castro, the center fielder, pitched in the top of this ninth. And a fly ball hit pretty well. Bay back to the wall. Sawinski, and it's off the wall. Ryan McMahon picks up an RBI. Double off the wall left center for McMahon. McMahon hits this ball to the deepest part of the ballpark here. I think this one was assisted with the wind a tiny bit. Just misses a home run by a couple feet. Strike and if you're Moreta, you certainly want to uh, clean things up here and get this one in the barn, get on the flight. It's an earned run, just as soon not have on his ledger. And this lopsided ball game for the Pirates. This should do it. Fly ball. Center field, Bay, and Rays, the Jolly Roger. Yep, it'll be a jolly flight home. Andrew McCutcheon and company put it to the Rockies here in this series. The Pirates sweep them. They've won 11 of 16. They improved to 12 and 7. They hand the Rockies their eighth straight loss. Johan Oviedo continues this string of starts. That's nine in a row. Pirates pitcher has gone at least six innings. That was a thumping right there, Neil. 18 hits. Nine runs between the first two innings. I mean, 
The Pirates came in here and, and played about as well as we've seen a play, team play in quite some time. Get the two of two in St. Louis to start this road trip. Take all three here. Five and two and some ahead of steam going into that this four game series in Pittsburgh against Cincinnati Reds. Well, and uh, that's just fun to watch. Jolly Roger raised for a third straight time and the Pirates go five and two on this seven game road trip as they head home to get ready to take on the Cincinnati Reds tomorrow night at home at PNC Park. Robbie, I believe, he is uh, downstairs with a Pirate starter. I certainly am. Johan Oviedo, nine consecutive quality starts for a Pirate starter. Nothing short of impressive, but first of all, what is it with this team right now and just collectively the offense is there the pitching is there and all of a sudden it's a sweep here in Denver what happened. I mean like like Kutch say um, you know it's not ego in that clubhouse we we we've you know we we treat each other like with love with a lot of energy we support each other in every in every moment in every every situation so every time we fall for like a second you know there's always somebody will you know bring you up so it's it's amazing to be part of this club right now and, and you know we. We love to keep, you know, to keep winning. Johan, this is three consecutive quality starts for you. 19 and two thirds inning. You've allowed two earned runs. What is going on with that? How are you able to do it? Like, you know, like I've been saying, like, try to not think a lot. Just try to go up there and, and um, you know, enjoy the game. And this, this game, it, it's hard, but at the same time, it's beautiful. Um, so just, just try to have fun up there. Throws and my teammates and, and the coaches and, you know, just, just feel blessed. Uh, uh, for how we've been playing as a team before you even threw a pitch it was five nothing what does that do for your mind to step on the mound with a five run lead I mean t um, games like this is our thing is actually harder just because uh, you know you're actually uh, spend more time in the in the you know the dog out um, you know you, you got to be uh, aggressive even if it, you know they score a lot of a lot of runs so it's you just you just try to find something to keep yourself upset or you know in a kill mode so you know just got to keep going. Kill mode. I like that. Hey, our cameras saw you talking to Kutch in the last couple innings. What's it like having him as a teammate? And what are those discussions like? Man, he's amazing, man. We have him around. It, he, he brings such a good vibe, such a good, um, you know, uh, it's, he brings a lot of, like I'm saying, like, uh, he have a lot of experience, you know. So everything he talk about the game, it, it, he always have something to say about, like, some situations and, I mean, listen to him. You know, we as a pitcher, we face heater. So, hear advice from a you know for a guy like him that has been at the game for so long and have such a good career. It's it's amazing to share thoughts and you know have a, a, at least you know a couple moments to actually you know share time with him. So it's it's really amazing to be part of it. Johan, congratulations on a great day. Thank you, guys. All right, how about that, Greg and Neil? Johan Oviedo and the Buccos, a sweep endeavor. Big thanks to this guy, Johan. Yep, thank you to Johan Oviedo. Thanks to Robbie and Spikowski. What a series for Pirate fans. Glad you were here to watch it with us as the Pirates sweep the series. They head home, get ready to take on the Reds and Dodgers. And as our buddy Mike Lang would say, if you don't come out to PNC Park and see at least one of these ball games, shame on you for six weeks. And I guess we could say the same thing about sticking around to watch the post game show. For Neil Walker, Robbie and Spikowski, Greg Brown, thanks for watching. Stick around, more to come. 14-3, Pirates over the Rockies.